What's up guys, my name is Elle and welcome to or back to the coffee shop project. Today we're roasting again like I did a couple times last year, but I was just kind of getting a feel for it then and today I'm gonna be more intentional. I'm gonna be using Lady Kingston's How to Make Coffee as a guide as always, writing down notes, times, all the good stuff. And the coffee that I'm making today is gonna have brown sugar and blackberry notes. And I'm gonna be doing a light roast and a dark roast, trying to figure out which one brings out those flavor profiles the best. So if you want some details on the background of home roasting, I have a lot of that in my first two roasting videos. I'm gonna link those down below. Today, we're gonna kind of skip over that and get into the technical stuff. I'm gonna be trying to roast my darker coffee first, just because I've learned that dark roasts are a little bit more forgiving and I really wanna nail the light roast. So let's get started with that. I kind of reviewed before I'm starting this and the first pop should come around four minutes. I think we're gonna take this out around more 10, but let's get started. So I have my timer going, we're gonna watch that like a hawk, take notes as we go, and I'll touch base when something happens. We're at nearly a minute now, and the beans are starting to get the tiniest bit colored. To get a more even roast, I like to kind of shake it so that everything's just kind of moving around. Never leave this just unattended when it's roasting. This isn't popcorn, this is something that you actually have to pay attention to. At about a minute, we have the, is it the chaff? I think it's the chaff, right? The chaff is starting to come off the beans, kind of makes a mess, cleanup is not fun here, but the reward of roasting your own coffee is worth it. They're looking good, relatively even. There are a few ones that are burnt in there already, but it's all gonna even out. We got our first pop, so we're at about two minutes and 50 seconds, and it's not popping consistently yet, but you get one like every now and then before it starts all the time. And the beans are a nice like milk chocolatey brown with a few lighter ones in there. It is looking good and I, I love the smell of it roasting. It's like popcorn and nostalgia, it's a great mix. So okay, I'm gonna call it at 320. We've hit our first pop solidly. And if I were just to kind of turn it now and set it, it would be a lighter roast. Again, we're going for our darker roast so we're gonna keep it in here until we get that second pop. Okay, so the first pop's over. We're not hearing it anymore. I'm thinking in about a minute, minute and a half, we're gonna start hearing our second pop, but I'm no professional, so we'll see. Okay, our second pop is starting, and we're at 4.30, so about what I thought. Yep, we're in, okay, so 4.45. The second pop is thoroughly on its way. And the beans are getting pretty dark, but they're not burnt. Okay, we're at about 512, and I'm smelling some burning, which means that I'm gonna turn my machine off, pour it into the sieve, and I am gonna shake, shake, shake until they're feeling nice and cool, and then I'm gonna pour them back into this little bowl. So I'm gonna call this as more of a medium roast, than like a dark Italian roast. If you've ever seen like Starbucks coffee beans, that's a true dark roast. This is, you know, somewhere in the middle. I'm happy with how it looks and I am excited to taste it. So when I toured Mike McKim's coffee at Roastery, Cuvée Coffee, back earlier last year, he told me that all the coffee should be cooled in about four minutes. And obviously he has like a full on roaster, so that's gonna be a lot more precise. So at about the nine minute mark over here, that's when my coffee should be cooled to the touch. Sometimes I find that my sieve gets too hot and I like to pull out another sieve and kind of toss them back and forth so that they don't just like keep cooking. The color's coming in, but they're nowhere near like that Starbucks black. These are Starbucks beans, they're burnt. These I would consider a true dark in comparison. So I'm nearing the end of our cooling period, which means that I need to clean up this chaff. So I'm gonna turn the camera off, hand this off to my mom to keep her cooling, and then I'm gonna clean up and we're gonna get ready for round two. But the beans are getting to a cooler temperature. I'm happy with how they look. I'm always shocked when I do this, that it actually looks like coffee, except for this one, this one is coming out. But I'm pretty happy with this. I'm gonna set it off to the side, let them finish cooling down, and I'm gonna start our second roast, which is where we're gonna go for an even lighter roast. So I have my mom over here filming and shaking the beans. She's really an overachiever. But um, if you wildly whip this sub around, it cools it down faster. So now we're gonna stop the camera and I'm gonna make her wave her sub around and we don't need to film that one. 
initial thoughts looking at these two roasts, this is the medium-ish roast, this is the dark roast. There are some beans that are truly darker than the other ones, but the minute and a half didn't do as much as I thought it would, which kind of leads me to think maybe I'm pulling them way too early. To stay consistent with that one and a half minute interval, I did five minutes and then a minute and a half. For a light roast, I'm gonna pull them at three and a half minutes and based on my calculations so far, that's gonna be right at or right before the first pop, so it should be very light. In case I forgot to mention it earlier, the green coffee that I've based these roasts off of is Bodhi Leaf Company's El Salvador Finca La Providencia Roast, and it has blackberry and brown sugar flavor notes. And I was only gonna do two roasts at first, a light and a dark, but then I decided I wanted to go the whole range. So I have a light, medium, and dark roast here. The biggest difference I can see is the light to the medium. The medium to the dark, there is a difference, but I'm not seeing it too much yet. But luckily, these beans need a two-day degassing period Period. So we'll see how they develop over the next couple of days. So I'll touch base with you guys in two days. I'm wearing the same outfit, so it might make you think otherwise, but it has in fact been nearly 48 hours since I initially roasted these three coffees, and I know there's three, not two. I was gonna do two, like a light and a dark, but the medium and the dark were so close together that I needed to throw a light one in there. So we have three, and I waited 48 hours to cut these, because in the past I've done 24, and I feel the flavors just were not developed enough, and I didn't have the patience to wait to 72, so we're hitting that sweet spot at 48. And I know there's something good about every cup of coffee, whether it be the story, the flavor notes, the acidity, there's always something awesome to say about it. But since these are my own coffees, I'm gonna be cutthroat. Let's get them cut. So like other coffees that have berry flavor notes, this coffee smells really potent. Potent's a bad word, what's a better word for like potent, like flavor smells? Um, aroma. Aroma, so it has a really strong aroma, similar to the blueberry smell and the coffee that I tried from the US Roast a couple months back. So I'm pumped to try this one. This is our light roast, and you can see in there that some of the beans are a d more like medium light, and then some of them are really light, and we need 22 grams of them. So let's get that measured out. My favorite part of the whole coffee experience is that first grind smell, and it's even more rewarding when it's your own coffee. I'm gonna set this to a 15 on my Breville because it's way less precise than a professional machine. And the aromas come out even more with that like fresh grind. I'm gonna finish this up off camera because you've seen it before and I'll switch base when I'll be ready to go. Okay, all of our coffees are ground up and my initial reaction is that there is a perfect ombre showing from the lightest roast to the darkest roast, which means that I hit somewhere in the right ballpark, which is really encouraging. And I've decided today that I'm gonna brew these coffees with my Clever Dripper. And I choose the Clever Dripper because it quickly extracts as many flavor profiles as possible. And if you wanna try out the Clever Dripper at home, a quick, easy ratio is gonna pop up on here. I'll see you guys in a sec. So we have our first two, our light and medium coffees done. And I thought I would show you the pour of our last one because with the glass it's so cool because it's all transparent and the initial thing i'm noticing is that you can't see the color difference if you look dead on at the glasses with the coffees but if you look from the top i'd like to believe that there's a little bit of color variation there but we will see with this last one that'll really tell and if you look at the top you can decide for yourself if you think there's color variation there like all things in coffee, we're gonna say it's pretty subjective. And this is my own coffee, so like I said earlier, I'm gonna rip this apart, and while I'm ripping it apart, we're gonna apply the four principles of coffee tasting, my favorite. And that starts with smell. We're gonna go light start right away. This is really weird. It smells kind of like Sharpie, really faintly. We're gonna see how that tastes. So it's not as berry as I thought it would be. It's like brown sugar blackberry and you can kind of get it in there, but it's kind of like woody and earthy too. I'm mixed about that light roast. I'm hoping the medium is gonna be the sweet spot. Maybe it's the mug, that Sharpie smell is still there. That's so weird. It's a similar profile on this one. I like it slightly better than the first, but I mean, they might just get slightly better being someone that likes a darker roast. Again, the flavors are not as robust as I was hoping they'd be, but so far, 
this one's a little bit better. Finally, we are gonna try our dark rose. Not too Sharpie, so that's, that's a good start. Sharpie's weird, I've never gotten that before coffee. Of the three, this one's by far my favorite. It could be because it's the freshest and the warmest right now, but I just like how the watery body of it sits in your mouth, and I like the subtle flavor of the blackberries with a little bit of acidity like there on your tongue. The light one isn't doing it for me. The medium one's okay. If I had to expound on this roast, I'd probably work with the dark one and maybe even take it that one step darker, but overall, I'm not loving how fruity flavor notes present themselves in coffee. I think of it as like, it's something that I would never want to add cream to. Cause like, think about milk and fruit. They don't go together and that's how I think of it in coffee. And I like to have the option to add cream. I think to do this again, I would love something with like a Central American chocolatey flavor profile. So when I roast again, we'll do that one. But overall, what I got out of this roasting period is the intentionality with timing. And that's something that I really needed to work on with roasting. So while I don't love this coffee, I like what I learned and I enjoyed the experience of seeing that color variation and the grinding process and all of that. So it wasn't a waste of time, but going forward, this would not be the coffee for me. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this episode of The Coffee Shop Project. If you liked it, I would love if you would consider subscribing and you can follow me on Instagram, Adele Grayson. TikTok is just The Coffee Shop Project and I will see you somewhere else on the internet. Bye guys.